today I wanted to talk a little bit about a spur band and uh, making your own spur bands and also uh, getting yourself educated on uh, spur making, how I got started and uh, what kind of uh, trainings out there. Anyway, uh, first of all I wanted to say uh, I got started making spurs. Uh, I was working for a ranch and I was a welder, fabricator, a fence builder. I built all the corrals, repaired chutes, built fences, all those kind of things. And the only pair of spurs I had ever built was for my son when he was bull riding. Uh, we, we threw some together with an offset shank and uh, he uh, uh, used those throughout his bull riding. But uh, the ranch uh, boss came up to me and wanted to know if I could make him a pair of spurs. And uh, I tried, uh, told him, hey, I, I try, you know. So I think I uh, threw some together and uh, they didn't look so well. It's my first pair. Put some nickel silver uh, uh, pieces on it and gave them back to him. And he said, well, those, those look pretty good. But you didn't mark them. I want them to be your first pair because I know you're going to make a lot of them. And uh, he said, also, I want this nickel silver engraved. I thought, well, <laughs> good luck with that. But he said, hey, I'm going to send you to a school in Alpine, Texas. They're going to teach you to engrave. I want, I want you to come back and fix these spurs up. So off I went, he, he paid for my first school with uh, Johnny Wirtz and Alpine. And I went out there and Johnny taught me to engrave. And I went back another time on my own account and uh, did an advanced school. So I learned a lot from Johnny and that's his picture I always have over here on the wall. But uh, then as far as making spurs, uh, I, I bought some videos uh, from Bruce Cheney and uh, I did all that for a while and, and that got me started. Then I was fortunate enough to go to a, uh, a week session, a private session with Wilson Capra over in Cristola and Wilson taught me actually to, to build the style spur that I make now. And so these ideas that I put out on my videos are not my ideas. They're ideas that I've learned from some of the, the best. And uh, I'm not saying they're right and all, but, but every spur maker uh, has a certain style. And mine kind of follows what I learned. And uh, so, you know, that's why uh, these YouTube videos are really great for the ones that are out there uh, trying to learn to make spurs. Um, I didn't really uh, deal with YouTube back when I got started and I don't know how much of it was around. Uh, probably not much, but uh, I would call guys up that I had met at different shows and ask them a question. Stuart Williamson helped me a lot. Mike Pardue. Uh, all these different guys uh, helped me a tremendous amount and they would just call them up and they were gracious enough to tell me what I needed to know and uh, now you know we have YouTube and uh, I'm trying to put these videos out to help uh, not only the uh, beginners but but you know every time I look at someone else's videos on YouTube on spur making I learned something I learned something just the other day watching a guy and uh, so uh, I'm always open to open to learning something every every time I look at those YouTube videos. Uh, but I'm making uh, some spurs. Uh, got pretty good projects going on for Christmas 2022. And uh, uh, I wanted to talk to you a minute about the spur band. And again, I'm not saying this is my ideas. This is what I've learned. Uh, a lot of guys buy their spur bands uh, already cut out, laser cut out, buy their shanks, rowels, all that, and that's great. Uh, but the, the thing is, you can't always get them. You can't get the style you want. Uh, you can't get them when you want them. And I think that's going to get more and more uh, the norm. 
and so I like to make mine uh, and make the style I want and uh, you know I think everybody should learn that if you can uh, me and Mike Pardue uh, we always uh, said hey the more independent you can be on rolling out your own silver and creating your own spur bands and your own buckle blanks and all that the, the better off you are uh, because uh, then you don't have to depend on so many people but anyway I make my spur bands myself and uh, here's something I'm working on I use a quarter inch thick band and uh, this is all that I've learned uh, mainly from uh, Wilson Capron and you can see this in some of his videos he's got a super good channel but anyway Wilson talks about how the strength of a spur is right here in the back of the spur and then you don't want to continue out the thickness to the front because they become real heavy clumsy uh, uncomfortable to wear so I taper the, the outside of the spur down to about an eighth of an inch here in the front and uh, anyway you can buy um, if you can find some uh, bar stock that's say you're making a one inch band if you can find some bar stock that's uh, one inch, one and an eighth, whatever uh, wide, or if you're making better yet, if you're making a seven eighths band like these, uh, if you can find a one inch bar stock cold roll, so you don't have the scale and the, the all that on it. Um, I'm not going to talk numbers on steel. People have their own preferences, but anyway, uh, cold roll preferably, quarter inch, one one inch bar stock you can simply just take your pattern like I've got here and uh, put it on your bar stock mark it cut off the ends and your slots drill your holes and uh, finish out the ends and you're pretty much uh, done with that band other than cleanup now you can see here what I do first is I cut out my spur band and you've seen if you've seen my spur band video uh, I've done a few things a little bit different uh, now uh, of course I, we like I said earlier I taper the bands quarter inch in the back slowly get to about an eighth of an inch in the front and this band has not been tapered yet I cut straight down on my uh, swinger slots and I've already pre-drilled this is my hole here that I use in bending the band and also uh, uh, bradding the shank uh, before I weld it that's something I do that uh, Wilson doesn't do and some of the others but uh, that's something I, it's my personal preference anyway uh, I cut straight down on the uh, swinger slots I don't cut across this way no more I used to try to do that with my bandsaw but what I do now is I leave it at this stage I taper it out in the shop on my uh, 12 inch disc sander once I get it tapered this is only an eighth inch thick then it's not quarter inch so I just take my scroll saw put it in this slot and cut straight across it it goes real fast that's a lot easier to me and a lot more accurate than trying to angle my um, bandsaw down into these slots so that's what I'm doing now once I get it tapered I take a scroll saw cut across the bottom between the slots and that that's out then I start filing on them and if you've got two spur bands uh, they need to match of course and uh, you want them perfectly matched what I used to do and what I had learned uh, was to tack weld them and somewhere on them to hold them together then start filing on them and uh, uh, get them all matched up what I do differently now is I take uh, some 3 16 bolts with washers and I'll put them in these slots Sometimes you have to run them in.
and then I'll put a washer and nut on this side and tighten them down. I do the same thing with this bolt back here. Okay, and once I've got these in here, I can take the two bands together. They're put together like this, and I can take them out to my 12 inch disc center. I can rotate them like this, straighten up the ends, or I can hand file them. Uh, also, you can move these bolts. Uh, maybe put one bolt in the center, uh, one bolt out here, and you can file the uh, slants on these slots here, get those paired up. The uh, Once I cut across here and I've got the uh, swinger slots in there, uh, I can file those also, get them straightened up. So that's what I do now, uh, differently from what I used to do. I used to uh, cut the slots with the bandsaw and then I would uh, tack weld them together or just clamp them in the vise together and hand file them until they're matching. But the bolts have worked pretty good for me. So it's just uh, some thoughts on spur band. Uh, shanks, you can make them too out of half inch steel. They take a little longer to cut out. Uh, but uh, if you're gonna be a custom maker, you know, you, you wanna make your own uh, spur bands and the shapes and everything. Uh, it slows you down a lot trying to make them. But uh, I just like the idea that I can do everything that I need to uh, in-house and not have to buy too much. Uh, I still have to buy all my supplies and, and of course my steel and things, but uh, don't have to put out too much money on uh, getting stuff laser cut or jet cut. So I just want to talk to you about that and uh, hey, seek out all the training you can on this stuff and you'll you'll uh, do good and there's a lot of good youtube videos now i noticed there's a there's a lot more than what there was just a, a year ago so look through them you'll learn something from each one of them and uh, i appreciate y'all turning tuning in to me and uh, like and subscribe to my channel thanks a lot